Okay, so I checked everything. It's all free. This thing's good. And we got it blown out a little bit. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Let's break it in half. It's probably a tad snug. So. Oh yeah, and that's really all there is to it, to setting the emergency brake. It's just like setting the drum brakes on a car, you got the little star wheel. But where in a car you might want a little drag, you want no drag on the emergency brake. So, and then you can just pull the lever. Yep, that works well. So as long as I can get the uh, cable to actuate, we're going to be good. Now we're going to go do that to the other side. Okay, so I spread the cow spread the pads apart a little bit. And you can see you got two different setups here. You got a closed end and an open end. So the closed end goes on first, and the open end drops in just like that. And then you can bolt it back together. I got a lot of clearance in here because I Squish the uh, pads apart to give me some clearance, make sure nothing was going to bind up. 12 millimeter action. And that's on. Moves nice and free. Now we're just going to do that on the other side. Alright, so looking at the brake lines, obviously I've got to use these brake lines for the disc brakes but which isn't an issue but if you look at the hose that actually goes up to the frame the one from my truck is a bit longer including the vent here so I'm going to pop these lines off take this use the vent from my 97 which had rubber hose on it until I forgot to unhook it. Now it doesn't, but it will. Uh, and then take these lines off of this block and then reinstall them on that rear end. I'm running out of wire brushes. I'm trying to make that as easy as possible. disconnected these. These lines were 7 16 but that may vary. And this is a 9 16 Oh, and the dead is back. There you go. Now you got your vent and my longer brake line. All right, so I figured since I got easy access, I'm just going to. Pour the oil in it from here. Uh, it's supposed to be four ounces of posi track stuff, but I got a seven ounce tube, so that's what's going in it. 
close enough. And then we got our 85 140. This is the good stuff. Or oh, it doesn't screw around with their oil weights. <laughs> but it actually, the 140, it says that on the tag. And that's it. Now we're going to put the pan back on. A little bit of silicone. Since I actually have the original tags for mine, I'm going to keep them. Now, one of them has lubrication on it, and the other one, and the other one has the gear ratio. All right, now we're done, and now we're going to get set up put the emergency brake cable back on. All right, so she's basically back together. I'm not terribly happy with the brake lines, the emergency brake lines, but yeah, worst comes to worst, if they don't free up enough to work, I'll get them out of the junkyard for a couple of bucks. So now I'm going to get, wind's picking up, now I'm going to get the uh, motorcycle jack, lift that thing up, and see if we can get it underneath the truck. All right, so she's in, brake line hooked up, vent hooked up, drive shaft went in, no problem. Everything matched as far as the U-bolts and all the spacing, everything looks pretty good. We just bled the brakes. The only thing I don't have completed yet is the emergency brake, because uh, the one on the other truck was not complete. And I'm not quite sure what I'm missing here, but something's not quite the right length because if I hook those two things together right now The emergency brake will be on all the time and I don't quite know what to do with that, but uh, we'll figure it out. That's not terribly important um, So We are about ready to put the tires back on this thing tie wrap that emergency brake crap out of the way and see if the brakes work. All right, well, I found, I actually had a drilled hole here for this mount. I had to get that bolt, which is a self-tapper from the factory off of the other truck. And that allowed us to hook the emergency brake up. And it actually works. So that's kind of nice. Even that right side that was kind of sticky, that long cable is a little sticky, but it was enough to release, and I don't think it's going to drag. So, we are now, I think, ready to put the wheels back on it. So, that's next. Okay, so we got brakes. And emergency brake. And the rear end's not making any dumb noises yet. We'll see how that goes. But, uh, when we first put it all back together, we had just spongy, spongy, spongy pedal. So I went to the other truck and I looked and the master cylinder on the other truck's three eighths of an inch, no, about three sixteenths of an inch bigger in diameter on the piston. So that moves a lot more fluid. So I figured, okay, it's easy enough. And so we swapped that out. Everything was the same, no issues. Uh, but it still had super, super spongy pedal. The brakes would work, but they just weren't really working. Uh, so we bled all the fronts. Nothing. Bled the rears again, nothing. Went, I've probably gone through a quart and a half of fluid. Certainly flushed the system out. And 
Then we bled the master cylinder. Cracked the fittings up there and bled that in case I had gotten a bubble in that. Didn't make any difference. And then after a couple of burnouts and sliding around up and down my driveway, making sure the rear end still works, of course, I was thinking, you know, this just feels like it has a ton of air in it. And then I'm thinking, well, how the hell could I still have air in it? And it's like, well, what would happen if I had flipped the calipers from one side to the other in the rear? And this is not how I figured it out, but let me show you. So I'll go to the right side here and we'll look. And you can see the bleeder is on the top. Great. Well, that one's fine. So, conveniently, when I was thinking this, I started on this side. And look at what we got. The bleeder is on the bottom. <laughs> so, this is a right-handed caliper on the left side of this truck. Now what we did to fix it is to pull the wheel off, pull the caliper off, spread spread the pads apart, and I stuck a big socket in there. And then I held the thing, untook it off, yeah, got it completely off the bracket, and then I held it face down so the bleeder was up. And we just bled it with the bleeder up and got a whole bunch of air out of the system. And now I have brakes. I got a nice hard firm pedal, real smooth, everything is good. I am excited. Now, the key will come in seeing long term whether my cobbling together of that center section and that pinion gear is going to matter. But what I can say for right now is it does pretty good burnouts, inadvertently uh, or not. Anyway, so there you go. Something else to look for. Watch out for dummies. If you make sure your bleeders are up and uh, that you don't randomly have two of the exact same caliper on each side. So that's kind of neat. But for now, short term, it's a win. I got disc brakes on a 97 Ford. Long term, we'll keep you updated. It's how the rear end lasts, because that's the only thing that's concerning at this point. Anyway, if you got any other questions, please feel free to give them a shout in the comments. Otherwise, get out, fix something. Y'all take care.